These are Saiga antelope. Over 100,000 stretch beyond the horizon in what biologists believe is the largest concentration of nomadic animals found outside of Africa. They have traveled miles across the steppe to give birth. They have chosen this area because of its fresh grass, and water, and remoteness from people. There are pregnant females. Young bucks. They lead a seemingly carefree life this time of year, but they're in grave danger over most of their range. And everywhere, newborn saiga. Their mothers, many of whom were born nearby exactly one year ago, have the most important task to bear the calves and nurture them until they're strong enough to migrate onwards. Most of the world's saiga live in Kazakhstan in Central Asia. The land is mainly arid steppe and grassland. An estimated 400,000 inhabit these three regions just north of the Caspian in Ustuart between the Caspian and Aral Seas and at Betpakdala in Central Kazakhstan. Saiga travel hundreds of miles throughout the year. In May, they give birth in these areas. In summer, they migrate north. In the fall, when the weather turns cold, they head south to avoid heavy snows. Winters on the steppe are brutal, with strong winds and temperatures falling to minus 40 degrees. The saiga adapt by growing thick coats. Sometimes, nature turns against them. The most dangerous period is when ice freezes over the snow or when there's very heavy snowfall. If they cannot get to their food, which now is mainly herbs and shrubs, thousands will perish on the steppe. By the end of winter, the saiga are worn down and the herds are thinned. In spring, the steppe at Ustuart wakes up. The grass grows long and rich. It is the preferred food for saiga this time of year, though they can digest 80 different kinds of plants and lichens. There are wildflowers everywhere. Insects find their mates. For saiga, late spring is the most critical time of the year. If conditions are right, they will successfully replenish their numbers. Baby saiga are born in May with mass calvings during a 10-day period. This calf is a day old and defenseless. He hides to await his mother. He can run fast but does not have stamina to keep up with the older animals who can run at speeds of over 40 miles per hour. If he does not find his mother and drink some milk soon, he will die. Other females with calves will not suckle him. The saiga recognize their young by scent. First, they sniff him, and all reject him. He struggles on. His mother is nearby, but because the grass is tall and there are so many other animals, it is a miracle that they can find each other. He is lucky today. But the odds are stacked against him. Over half the young die before they reach six months. And if he makes it into adulthood, his life expectancy is less than four years.
The water hole is a place where saiga and other animals congregate. Females need a good drink to help produce milk for their calves, which can number up to three. This is a wader. A shell duck is startled by a group of young males. While this older buck ignores the action, the young males play. The bucks become sexually mature at 19 months, contrasting sharply with the females who can breed as early as seven months of age and calve at one year. In a few months, males will fight fiercely for females. For now, life is mainly play and rest. But for many of the bucks in Kazakhstan, there is danger nearby. 500 miles to the east lies the Betpakdala region, which, until a few years ago, was home to the largest concentration of saiga in the world. It is the time of high vulnerability, one week before the females are due to give birth. In the center of the region, at an abandoned weather station, poachers prepare their tools. They say there are as many as 30 teams now working the region, some all year round. They head north in search of Saiga. Their technology is simple, guns and motorcycles. Their aim is deadly. On the first pass, this Saiga is lucky. A minute later, he is dead. The bucks are killed for their horns. A pair will be sold for about $10. carcass is left to rot on the step. In one day, he says, two men on a motorcycle can kill 50 to 60 saiga. The horns are exported by the tons. Before, our hunts lasted only one or two days. Now we need to go for a week. The horns go east to China. They will be used to prepare traditional medicines. This illegal trade, once under government control, is now completely out of control. Later, when the poachers decide to send meat back to their village, they are indiscriminate. They aim for the closest animals. This is a pregnant female due to give birth this week. The poachers say they hunt to feed their families. They don't like it. It is dangerous and illegal, but there is no other work on the step. But even they know the killing is self-defeating. Soon they say there won't be enough saiga to make their hunt worthwhile. Five years ago, there were 500,000 animals in Betpakdala. Today, only about a quarter remain.
Hundreds of miles away in Ustuard, the bucks stand a better chance of survival. But even here, this vast group is being disturbed during the birthing period. Researchers on an expedition made up of Kazakh and British scientists are studying the diseases and parasites of Saiga. Dr. Eric Morgan autopsied this animal after the expedition was forced to put it down. Right, this is a, a saiga that uh, our guys saw when they were out this morning. Uh, poachers have obviously shot it. Either they were aiming for the male or they aimed for this one and missed. They've shot through the leg. The leg is fractured and this fracture is several days old. So the saiga has been wandering around with a broken leg. The calf inside that was ready to, to be born in the next few days is uh, his mother is ill, his mother eventually is dead. The calf will just die inside it. And even though I'm here as a scientist and obviously meant to be dispassionate about these things, that really disgusts me that they've shot a pregnant animal, killed a mother, and the calf is just left to die inside her. He buries them because they are close to camp. They are victims, as are many others killed indirectly by poachers. Stampedes can cause pregnant females to abort, and newborn are often trampled, or if they're separated from their mothers, they starve to death. Other animals and birds, like this steppe eagle, live in harmony with the saiga. There is so much food from normal mortality that this eagle is glutted. A little later in the year, the eagle will hatch aggressive chicks, The nest is often on the ground, made from sticks and debris. In Kazakhstan, with the breakup of the farm collectives, there's been a mass exodus of people from the steppe. As a result, some of the smaller animals have benefited. In wetter areas of the steppe, you can find beautiful songbirds, yellow wagtails, the male, and his mate. A blue throat. They feed on fat grasshoppers. Stone chats have nests well hidden in the grass. This female arrives with a grasshopper, followed by her mate. She cleans the nest. Then, it's the male's turn. Today there is a greater chance that these baby birds will grow up. In the past, many nests were trampled by cattle from the collectives, but now livestock is down by 60%. The Kulan is an Asiatic wild ass, a species that was never tamed by man. They once ranged to the Black Sea and beyond. Their history, early this century, is tragic. They were hunted across the steppe in Kazakhstan to extinction. But in the 1950s, a program successfully reintroduced Kulan from Turkmenistan. Their numbers are slowly growing. Today, 450 live in a national park. They have learned to live near man. They stay within the park where they are closely guarded. In contrast to Kulan, Saiga are nomadic and cannot be trained to stay in national parks. They need range and lots of it. This brings them in contact with poachers who are killing them in increasing numbers for their horns. Though not in immediate danger of extinction, their numbers are dropping. 
If they are not protected from illegal hunting, especially during the birthing period when they are most vulnerable, these saiga will face a bleak future.